Okay, so in this video, I'm going to walk through doing a little bit of, I'm going to just kind of implement a basic printing um, code to, to run through a set of text. So what I have here, I have green eggs and ham. Uh, it's all saved in a very long file format here. And basically what I want my code to do is just to run through this text file displaying line by line on the screen. Um, so what I'm going to do here, so I just want to kind of, I figured my point here is that I can walk you through some of the steps of how you might do this and along the way explain the kind of initialization of some of these things. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a period, like there's a lot of different ways you can do this to simplify things for you. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to do it just like this. And I think my thing was green eggs and ham.txt. So I'm going to make a new file to begin with. And then down here inside my buffered reader, I'm going to say buffer reader is equal to new buffered reader. And it needs to have some way of like reading the files. So we're going to do a new file reader. And some of the stuff, like, I don't expect, like, you just can't expect that you're going to understand all of these things, how they work. You know, we kind of just need to know that this is what we use and be able to use it without necessarily knowing all the stuff that's going on underneath. Because you just can never know all that stuff with computer science. So that can be a little bit unnerving, but it's just kind of the reality of dealing with computer science. There might be some things we just don't quite understand um, or don't we can use, but we don't necessarily know how the implementation of these work. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, so I've created a new file. I have like, yeah, create a file object. I'm loading that file into my buffered reader. Um, if I want to be like fancy, what I could do is I could actually just, so I'll show you, I'm going to show this a couple different examples where I'll do the, the fancy and the non-fancy version. Non-fancy version is this. We can just declare a file and then we will load that file into the file reader. But we could also like, we only need to use this once. So instead of doing that, I could take this out and just place it oh, and just place it right here. And then I'm creating the file directly into here, loading into the file reader, loading into the buffer reader, all kind of in one go. So that might be kind of, you know, I don't know, not really useful, not really required, but definitely what we could do. Um, so now we have the file. You can think it was, the file was saved on the computer. Now we've loaded it into the active Java processes. It's loaded onto our kind of, onto our RAM, onto our dynamic memory, so we can actually have access to it. Uh, and so then what do we need to do next? All right, so I'm going to do I'm going to just show the way that I have in the Google Drive. I'll show you how to do that, and then I will also show maybe a fancier, more condensed version of this. Not too fancy, but just a little bit fancier. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a you know first string is going to be called line, and it's going to be equal to br dot read line. And so remember what we said in the first video is that whenever we run br, like we're going you can think we have like a little pointer kind of pointing at this very first line. As soon as the file reader starts, the pointer is focused on this first line. When we run string line.br, you know, br.read line, we are going to produce a string from that and then it's going to run the pointer down a line. So let me just show you like why, what that might mean. So let me just, uh, let's just do a quick example here. Welcome to fast forward if this kind of makes sense to you automatically or you just kind of, you got it, you're good, you don't need more of this. Um, but just to kind of, to be explicit about this, let me just show you how this might work. So a string line is going to be equal to br.readline, and then we're going to print that out. Text is going to be equal to br.readline, print out text. So let's take a run at that. And so we get I am Sam, Sam, Sam I am, which are the first two lines of the book. Because, again, br has the br.readline has moved to the next line. So by the time we run this, the, the br, the pointer for the Befford reader, is already on the second line. And as after we run this code, it's going to be on the third line. Uh, so I won't, I won't print that, but like kind of keeping that in mind, whenever we call this, it's going to move the reader down a line because that's going to be kind of important. Uh, all right, so that's just doing one, two lines at a time. So what we're going to do here, and I'll show you a fancier version in just a second. We're going to say while this isn't null, so while there's some data, it could be empty, there could be like text in there. Um, but while the line isn't null, let's just do this. We're going to do system out print line. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to print out the line, and then we're going to say line is equal to br read line. And so we're going to keep running through this loop until we get to the end of the file. Uh, and we're just printing this out, so it should just, well, we should print out Dr. Seuss. Let's see. So we scroll through this. Uh, I am Sam, Sam, I am all that. I've read this a million times, so my kids maybe have heard it a million times too. It's going to run the entire code. There's a little bit of spacing in here, but that actually has to do with the file. If you look at the end of the file, there's some spacing in here too. So maybe I can 
clean that up a little bit. Let's save that. We we'll rerun it. And it's going to print through the entire thing. Okay, so there's a lot of fancy things that we could do here. I might come back to this example in just a minute. Um, yeah, so I might come back to this example in a, in a later video. Uh, okay, last thing I'll say, so hopefully that, that clarifies this. I'm going to add just one last little fancy thing in here. Um, what I don't like about this is that I'm declaring this kind of line and then I'm kind of redeclaring this. I could simplify this a little bit. And what I could actually do is I could say string line is equal to br next next line or read line in here. Delete that. I think I might need to do give me one second here. So I don't know where I was at with this before, but uh, so I had to make the I did just make a couple fixes. I had to make string as an empty line here, and then I'm updating the value of line is equal to br dot read line in here. So I'm updating the value first, and then I'm going to check to see if it's null immediately. And uh, this is just like a way of, I don't know if it's like a better version, but it's kind of condensing it just slightly a little bit. If we run this, it still works. Um, so that's like a slightly condensed version of that. Hopefully they kind of walked you through some of the steps in here um, and wasn't too confusing.